In this video, we're looking at a two-dimensional equilibrium problem. So what we're given is an overhead view of a crate. And we have three ropes pulling on this crate. And in two of those ropes, the tensions are known and the directions are known. And then the whole point of the problem is to figure out the tension and direction in the third rope that will balance those original two forces. So in part A, we start out by getting the X and Y components of our known tensions. And we start with T1. That's our 67 Newton tension pointing 60.4 degrees above the horizontal. And this vector points to the left and upward. Its X component is going to be negative because it points to the left. So the magnitude of that X component is a 67 cosine 60.4, but I put a minus sign on that to indicate that it's leftward. And when I run the numbers on this to three significant digits, I get negative 33.1 Newtons. Now the y component of that 67 newton vector is given by 67 sine of 60.4. And this takes a positive sign because it's pointing upward, which is our conventional positive direction for the y coordinate. And when I run the numbers on this, I get 58.3 newtons. Now T2 points downward and leftward, and that means its x and y components are negative. It has a magnitude of 39 newtons, so this x component is going to be a 39 cosine of 66, but with a minus sign in front. And when I run the numbers on this, that's a negative 15.9 newtons. And finally, T2y also takes a minus sign. The vector has a magnitude of 39, and then I multiply by the sine of 66 to get that y component. And this gives me negative 35.6 newtons. All right, so there's our two known force vectors all broken down into components. And in part B, we're asked to get the components of T3. That's our unknown tension so that the crate stays in equilibrium. In other words, so the vector sum of all three vectors is zero. And the simplest way for me to think about this is let's just find the total x component of the first two vectors added together, and then we'll make the x component of T3 the opposite of that. And we do a similar thing for the y direction. So what I'm saying here is I want T1x and T2x added together. And when I do this to three significant digits, I get 49.0 newtons pointing to the left, so it's a negative x component. So what I want to do is make the x component of T3 exactly the opposite, in other words, a positive 49.0 newtons. And that guarantees that the x component of T3 is exactly balancing the x component of those original two vectors. We do the same thing in the y direction. And when I add those first two y components, I get a 22.7 newtons total. That's an upward net y component, and that means the y component of T3 let me put the x on the x component real quick. The y component of T3 is going to be the opposite of that, or negative 22.7 newtons. Now finally, in part C, we're asked to express this vector T3 in polar form. That means we need the magnitude of it and the direction. And it's helpful to put these components we just computed into the diagram. So there's T3x, a 49.0 newton x component vector pointing to the right, and then T3y, which has a magnitude of 22.7 newtons and points downward. Now to get T3, we simply use the Pythagorean theorem. So T3 is the square root of 49 squared plus 22.7 squared. And when I run the numbers on this to three significant digits, I get 54.0 newtons for the tension T3. Finally, to get the angle theta, the way we work conventionally is just to express this as a positive angle less than 90 degrees, and then we can tell from the picture how it's oriented. In other words, we don't have to worry about measuring angles counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So computing theta this way, I'm just dealing with the magnitudes of the legs of this triangle, and theta is the angle whose tangent is the opposite over adjacent here, so 22.7 over 49. And when I run the numbers on this, I get 24.9 degrees. And that's it. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left. Or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.